finance to exist. If you don't solve business questions, if you don't solve governance questions, you cannot have football development. Football needs an environment to develop, and that environment needs money, needs resources in terms of finance, needs proper governance and decision making. If you have not addressed those issues, you cannot say we are talking about football on the pitch. I thought that was very important to remind the people, and we depend on the fourth estate to carry that message accordingly. Now, like Hussein has guided, when I'm giving the state of football, allow me also to do it in the eight areas of focus. It's the easiest way we communicate. In the area of governance, which is our main focus area, we have done a lot of improvement compared to where we were in 2013. Our members exist. They undertake their decisions. They undertake their assemblies. The structure has been set. That's why you no longer hear of wars inside the FUFA. People, people were used to wars, but we had addressed governance issues. There is a way of doing things. And that's what, in summary, we mean by governance. You may not like the way. You may want to change it. But the fact is that everything has been written down. I remember in 2005, we had only, one, only two sets of rules, the constitution and the, and the league rules. Today, FUFA has over 15 different sets of rules. What does that mean? That everything has a way of doing it. The difference is that people of today don't want to read. And I call upon you people in the fourth estate, the media, to be knowledgeable because you guide a lot. Decisions are done based on rules. Which rules we have set are now aware of who is going to be on the wrong side of the rules. And whenever the rules are set, some people have come up to challenge the rules. Now, that's not how things work. The rules are there. Even today, the rules exist. If you have a problem with the rule, challenge it right now. And we are going to listen. And look at your version of looking at things. But when somebody is on the wrong side of the rules, then you start challenging the rules. Then you are unfair. As FUFA, we shall continue to enforce rules without fear or favor. Sometimes the challenge is that we don't have enough information to take certain decisions in accordance with the rules. Sometimes we don't have the ability to get enough information. But the day we get enough information, we have the means and the ability to take the hard decisions. I've had some people come up and say, you know, referees are throwing games. But nobody has any practical evidence we can use. We have even invited those who have said that they are aware. And when they come to the committee, what do they say? They have nothing. There was one club which went into the media and said they have evidence that people are fixing matches. We called them to the disciplinary and said, tell us. They gave us a certain Germany number. And they said, these are the people calling us. Fufa, we have given you evidence. When you call the number, it doesn't exist. Now, all these things come up to depict the game of football badly. And we are calling upon the media to take on these people investigatively. Okay, Club X, you have said this. Please give us that information also. Let them give it to you. Why is it classified? You also follow up and find out. And you come back and tell the public. And say, actually, the information we got from Club X, we called the number, it was a German number, and nobody picks it. It gives confidence to the stakeholders. I'm still talking about governance, that we have put in place a judicial system very independent-minded people, very competent, very procedural. If anybody has a challenge, can report this matter. We have put in place our telephone numbers, our email addresses, where certain things can be reported. Because if you look at our mission, it is to develop the game, to promote it and protect it. 
So we have an email address called protect at fufa.co.ug. And the objective of that email address is to receive whatever information that can be used to determine any levels of failure to adhere to the rules and regulations of the game of football. So we believe there's been a lot of work done. We have been fair. We want to continue being fair. If we put in place the rules, if we put in place the judicial people, if we follow up the matters, then I think we have done good enough as far as governance is concerned. In the area of development, in the area of development, that's where we do youth football, that's where we do education of people, that's where we do women football, beach soccer, futsal, and general science and technology of the game of football. And again, without mentioning each of these areas, the results are clear. Where did we get women football? Where is it today? Where did we get youth football? Where is it today? Where did we find the education of the people? Where are they today? Where did we find beach soccer? Where are they today? Again, these are parameters that should inform the public of the work which is being done by the Federation. There was no competition for women. Today we have three leagues, three divisions of women football leagues, the Super League, the Elite League, and the Regional Leagues. We have the Cup, and we have entered the national team in all age categories, under 17, under 20, and the senior team for women. That is women football, from zero to that level. And these are the things we want to be measured by. Not Wolokoso. These are the things you have to measure a federation by. Where was women football when we started? Where is it today? Look at youth football. There were no competitions. Today we have a full league. Today we have national teams engaged who are champions of everything that exists in the region. We are champions of almost every competition at the youth level. We have played the finals of Africa. Now, that is work which is being done by people. Look at beach soccer. Finally, we are able to play in the Africa Cup of Nations of beach soccer. Look at Futsa. Full affiliated member with a full-time league. All these are responsibilities of the Federation and this work which is being done. When I tell people that FUFA has 600 operations going on every day, People don't understand, 600 small, small bits of work are going on every day. And we have a dashboard where we are monitoring each of these operations. Now, that's the institution we have put in place. I started by saying you need a FUFA that has the ability of running those six concurrent operations. So you need money, you need people, you need time. We have taught people, the media, the coaches, the referees, the administrators. And we are very proud of the generation of the media people we train. Very, very proud. You can see their quality is totally different. Totally different. We are very, very proud of them because as the media, you should push us in terms of how we present. Where we are wrong, we want to take the wrong. Where we are right, we want to take the right. Engage us, engage our people. They should give you the information you need to make your story. The days of the media being negative are gone. If you don't wake up to that reality, that you can be a successful journalist without necessarily being negative, the earlier you noticed that, the better. In terms of infrastructure, equipment, and the facilities, there is a very big challenge in this area. We continue having it, but again, the FUFA has an agenda. We are engaging at a very high level with government to ensure that there is an injection by government in the area of infrastructure. 
And that's why we are telling you as football, as FUFA, we need government. Because certain things we cannot do them. There is no federation in this world that can create the kind of infrastructure we need. We are not talking about stadiums. We are talking about even pitches in the villages. Football must be played for us to be able to generate the players and identify the talents and bring them to the high level. But again, the construction of our facilities and infrastructure continues. We expect at the end of the third and fourth milestone of Kadiba will be usable. At the moment, we are doing the third phase. There is a fourth phase after, which will be about planting the grass and putting the perimeter fence and completing the dressing rooms. We believe there will be one extra infrastructure put in the system for the communities around, for the leagues and for the clubs, and also for training of national teams. And again, this is work which is being done. In the area of the national teams and representative teams, today as we speak, FUFA looks after nine national football teams, and they are all active. This is something people don't get to know, and we expect that the media teach the people, tell them that FUFA is not about the Uganda cranes. We have nine national football teams. We have the under-15 boys who are the champions of Sekafa. We have the under-17 boys who are double champions of Sekafa, previous and current. We have the under-20 boys who are champions of Sekafa, finals of Africa. We have the under-23 and we also have the senior team